Last week we discussed divorce as Jesus uh, discussed divorce. And uh, maybe it's no coincidence that immediately after that the subject becomes children. Uh, for with divorce there are no winners. Uh, neither is the husband or wife a winner. But the children certainly aren't winners either. Children need a mother example and a father example. Uh, they need a set of parents. But nevertheless, we're coming to A.D. 30, event 33, the blessing of the children. There's three things that I want you to see in the blessing of the children. First of all, the pride of the disciples. Secondly, the pain of the Savior. And thirdly, the profession of the faith. You see, Jesus deals with all three of these things. The first is the fact that the children were brought to Jesus, not to the disciples. Perhaps there was a little bit of a pride issue here for the disciples. Perhaps they were just trying to shelter Jesus. Nevertheless, there, there's a pride problem here because uh, perhaps they felt that Jesus was only for adults. And then there was the pain of Jesus because these children who were being brought to Jesus, the disciples tried to prevent them from coming, tried to tell and rebuke the people that were bringing them uh, not to bring them. And Jesus feels pain about that. As a matter of fact, as you look at the particular Gospels, it's found in Matthew 19, verses 13 and following, Mark 10, 13 and following, and Luke 18, 15 and following. It tells us in Mark that he felt indignant now that's a very unusual thing for Jesus to feel indignant towards something. But obviously he was a little angry at his disciples for preventing these children from coming to him. And he said, let the children alone. Do not hinder them from coming. For the kingdom belongs to such as these. Uh, so we see this fact that children, perhaps even babies, were being brought to Jesus we see how much Jesus loves children, even babies, because it tells us that he took them into his arms. It tells us that he blessed them. I saw recently on an internet uh, blog that uh, if we don't raise our children, somebody else will. And that's exactly right. We have to raise our children in Christian values and standards. Otherwise, someone else will teach them not to honor Jesus and not to honor their father and mother. The last thing that he dealt with was, of course, the profession of faith. We must receive Jesus in a childlike faith, trusting, believing. A child has an uncanny way of knowing who they can trust and when they learn that they can trust them they put their faith and trust totally in them just watch a child a young child who doesn't yet swim but his father or mother says jump into my arms in the pool the child knows that their father or mother are not going to let anything happen to them and they fling themselves into water that's more than twice their height because they trust them and Jesus knew that these children were coming to him both not only by their own faith but by the faith of their parents that perhaps a blessing from Jesus would assure them of a good future. Baby dedication is an important part of a church service. When you dedicate a baby to the Lord, you're dedicating yourself to raise the child. But you're also praying over that child that they'll continue in the path that the parents have started them in. And so we see in this particular passage of Scripture, scripture uh, that we have three principles. Be careful of our own pride and thinking that the gospel is only for adults. Be careful that we don't upset Jesus by preventing children from coming to him. That we do everything that we can within our church organization to encourage children to come to Jesus and to trust in him. And that all of us, children and adults alike, must come to him in faith, trust, belief. 
not too long ago there was a debate going on in a meeting that I attended uh, about whether or not a young child should be baptized. Did they really understand the significance of what they were doing? Okay. My response wasn't what some of them wanted to hear. My response was, you have to weigh each one, one case at a time. You have to ask God for a spirit of discernment. Are these children wanting to be baptized because their friends want to be baptized? Or they want to be baptized because they want to be in good standing with Jesus. You see, all of us understand Jesus and salvation and doctrine better today than we did yesterday. We're all growing in our faith. But don't prevent the children who truly, sincerely want to be baptized. Even though they may not understand all of the I's and the T's, of the doctrine of the gospel. Don't prevent them from being baptized if they want to be baptized for the right reason, that they want to have Jesus as Lord of their lives. The full understanding of repentance, the full understanding of sin, may not come immediately to them. But is that a reason to prevent them from doing what God has told them to do? Now, remember, I'm leaving lots of room for you to assess whether or not God is telling him to do it, or whether their parents are telling him to do it, or whether they're doing it because their friends did it. So, let's remember, let's not prevent children from coming to Jesus. Let's do all that we can to encourage it. Let's be sure that we don't bring irritation and an indignation to Jesus because of our attitude towards children. And let's all take Jesus with a childlike faith. And that's my thought for the day. God bless you and have a great day.